physical change. So we, we talked about um, states of matter and their composition. We're going to talk about the changes that matter undergoes. There are physical changes. A physical change affects only, thank you, it is cooler out there. A physical change affects only the state or the appearance of the matter. It doesn't affect the composition. When you melt an ice cube, it goes from a solid to a liquid. Is it still water? Yes, it is. It hasn't changed its composition, but the state has changed. So in a physical change, the atoms or molecules do not change their identity. The particles themselves remain the same. So when water boils, so here we have a, a pot of water. Here's our little representation of, of water molecules. <coughs> they look like little Mickey Mouse heads to me. Um, here they are as a liquid. Here they are as a gas. The difference is that they're further away from each other. The individual little particles haven't changed at all. That's a physical change. You take a piece of wood and you cut it in half. Well, now you have two pieces instead of one. The pieces are smaller. They weigh less, but they are still made out of wood. That's a physical change. In a chemical change, the actual composition of the matter changes. So if we think about rusting, so here we have iron atoms in this iron nail. And we just have iron atoms, and they're attracted to each other, and this nail is nice and strong, and you can pound it into wood, and it's going to hold the wood together. When iron rusts, it combines with oxygen to form an iron oxide. The composition is different. It's not just iron atoms anymore. Now there's oxygen in here as well. The composition has changed. We also see evidence of this in that the color of the metal changes and its physical characteristics change. Rust is not very strong. If you have a very rusty nail and try to pound it into a piece of wood, it might just break in half. It's not strong anymore. So in a chemical change, we have atoms rearranging or transforming into other substances. It's a chemical change. So the differences here are, are it's what's happening with the particles. Here we have an illustration. Um, we've got dry ice. Dry ice sublimes. It doesn't melt. It goes directly from the solid state into the gas state. That's why it's dry ice, because it doesn't get your sandwiches all wet. When it does that, the particles, the molecules, are the same. One carbon, two oxygens, whether it's in the gas state or the solid state. It's a physical change. Um, when we dissolve sugar in water, so we have sugar molecules and they're all lined up together in the sugar crystals. When we stick them in water, they separate, they mix with the water, but the sugar particles themselves are still sugar particles. It's a physical change. There is a change. You had dry sugar crystals and now you have this sweet liquid. It's different, but it's physical. Here we have an illustration of propane burning. So here we have the propane molecules in the cylinder. When those burn, they combine with oxygen in the air, and they form carbon dioxide and water. The particles have changed. They are not the same as they were before. So that's a chemical change. Okay, so physical change, the particles themselves <coughs> don't change. They may be separated or mixed with other things, but the particles are the same. In a chemical change, the particles change. Then we also have properties. Um, and we divide these by chemical and physical properties. So a physical property is a property that the substance displays without changing its composition. It's something that we can observe without inducing a chemical change. So the smell of gasoline. Gasoline has a distinctive smell. When you smell the gasoline, does it change what the gasoline is? No, it doesn't. So things like odor, taste, I don't advise tasting gasoline, uh, color, appearance, melting point, boiling point, density, these are all physical properties. We can measure the density of something 
without changing its composition. A chemical property is something that is displayed only by changing the composition of the substance by a chemical change. And a chemical change and a chemical reaction are exactly the same thing. So if you have a chemical reaction, the, the components are changing and you don't have what you had before. So gas is flammable. I think we all know that. You got to be real careful with matches around gasoline because it'll explode. <clears throat> that is a property of gasoline that it burns. It's a chemical property because when you demonstrate that property, when you burn the gasoline, it's not gasoline anymore. You can measure the density of gasoline without changing it, but you can't demonstrate its flammability without destroying it. Um, corrosiveness, acidity, toxicity, these are also chemical properties. A chemical property of iron is that it rusts. When you demonstrate iron rusting, you don't have iron anymore. It's changed into iron oxide. Any questions? <clears throat> so let's look at a couple of examples here. Determine whether each change is chemical or physical, and what kind of property is being demonstrated for each of these. So we have a copper wire being hammered flat. Physical. Physical. It's still copper, isn't it? We've just changed the shape of it. So what kind of a property is that? Malleability. It's malleability. Metals are malleable, meaning you can hammer them flat. That's a physical property. You can demonstrate it without destroying the original substance. A nickel dissolves in acid to form a blue-green solution. That's a chemical change. So we know what a nickel looks like silver colored coin and now we're getting a blue green solution we see there's a change in the color this word dissolving doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a chemical change usually dissolving means physical change but here it's dissolving in acid and it's forming something new so this is a chemical change the property here is that nickel dissolves in acid is that a chemical property or a physical property? It's a chemical property. Because when that happens, the nickel becomes something else. It becomes nickel ions. Dry ice sublimes without melting. Physical change. It goes from a solid to a gas without melting. It's still carbon dioxide, dry ice. So anytime you have a state change, something melting or freezing or evaporating or condensing, all state changes are physical changes. So that's a physical change and it's demonstrating a physical property. A match ignites when struck on a flint. Chemical. The substances in the head of the match change when it ignites. So that's a chemical change. Any questions? In identifying chemical, physical change or property, you have to think about the individual particles. Are they changing or are they staying the same? 